Are you aware that New York City exists in the DC Universe? It's easy to overlook the fact that this real world location coexists with imaginary places such as Metropolis and Gotham. Not only does DC Universe have a New York City, but it also has its own personal Batman for the very first time in more than 80 years. Throughout I Am Batman issue 5, Jace Fox's Dark Knight has already shown himself to be much better than Bruce Wayne's Cape Crusader. Jace Fox has already been attempting to distinguish himself from Bruce Wayne as a separate Dark Knight. His objective for his Batman seems to be to serve as a beacon for the citizens of Gotham City to gather around, rather than someone just for villains to fear. And he appears to have had some success in this mission. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Exploring Jace Fox story arc from I Am Batman comic series. Timothy Tim Fox, sometimes recognized as Jace Fox, is a fictional DC Comics superhero. He serves as the leading character for the I Am Batman, The Next Batman Second Son, and Future State The Next Batman comic book arts. Tim Fox spent his adolescence away from his home, attending a military college. Tim traveled to New York alongside his family after fighting crime in Gotham to serve as the state's defender. When Tim returned to Gotham, after his time as a secret spy, he came upon an armored bat suit. He chose to take up the mantle and in order to fight the magistrate as well as the moral authority. Tim is a member of the Justice League's newest iteration throughout the Future State comics. He was created by Len Wayne and Irv Novik and debuted in Batman issue 313 of July 1979. Timothy Fox was the son of notable businessman Lucius Fox and Tanya Fox and elder sibling to Luke Fox. Lucius's job as Wayne Enterprises COO resulted in his absence from home which Tim didn't mind because Lucius cared for him. Tim's most reliable companion as the oldest child, while Luke focused on his academics and Tiffany was just a young child, was his younger sibling Tamara, whom he used to do everything with growing up. Tim quickly turned into a hedonistic playboy during his adolescence, reveling in a jet-set lifestyle of non-stop partying and promiscuous relationships. Tim rushed outside of his party the night prior to his 17th birthday following an unsuccessful effort to woo a woman who had piqued his interest. Tim was driving while on the line with another woman he'd previously linked up with, when he failed to spot a man walking across the street and crashed into him. Tim stepped out of his car to check up on the victim who had been severely hurt in the crash. Despite his pleadings, Tim fled in a frenzy instead of seeking help from his father, Lucius. To protect Tim from serious legal ramifications of his vehicular manslaughter, Lucius assembled a team of personal attorneys and private detectives to gather as much information about the hit and run that could be released to the media in order to build a positive narrative for Tim. The team Tim's investigation quickly revealed that the individual, Enrique Acevedo, had been a disreputable domestic abuser whose blood alcohol content was three times the legal permissible limit during the time of the crime, allowing them to make the argument that Enrique was heavily intoxicated and didn't realize that the traffic light shifted and ventured onto the street. Tim confronted Lucius about his father's attempts to conceal his involvement in the murder vehemently objecting to Lucius's blaming of the victim, Enrique, while he too was at fault. But rather than quarrel with Tim about it, Lucius opted to send his son to Sanford Military Academy, which was an international private school, infamous for being a dumping ground for troublesome children from wealthy families. Tim made friends with two of his classmates while there, Val and Hadia. Tanya begged Lucius to bring Timothy home when the Fox family obtained the Wayne family inheritance. In The Next Batman Second Son, Tim Fox graduated from the academy and spent an unknown amount of time working on improving his skills under various mentors. Now known as Jace, he invested the remaining time of his banishment from Gotham as a secret agent who identified various figures inside the criminal world who were hidden from the view of the law. Jace undertook an operation in Vietnam to hunt down Tyler Arkadine, a wealthy millionaire covertly operating a worldwide trafficking network. Work. With Vol serving as his handler, after the mission failed, Jace returned home to discover Grifter waiting for him, to come to Gotham at Lucius Fox's request. When Jace returned to Gotham, he found that his family had not improved much. Lucius's father is still emotionally aloof, unable to cope with the burden of acquiring the Wayne family's wealth on top of the mental trauma he's undergone as Punchline's hostage. Tanya, his mother, regards him as a disgrace and has acquired a strong dislike for costume vigilantism in general. Luke, Jace's younger brother, 
brother still detests him and refuses to forgive him for any of his previous behavior. And despite the efforts of Jace's younger sisters, Tamara and Tiffany, to keep the Fox household together, the former's damaged health after being drugged by Ratcatcher deteriorates to the point that she lapses back into a coma. After learning that Tyler Arcadine's private courier had just arrived in Gotham, Jace begrudgingly took a job at Fox Tech, working under Lucius in an attempt to covertly supply Vol with the tech he requires to obtain more insider information on Arcadine's operations in the city, all while preparing for his legal deposition, in which he honestly testified. After that, Jace would clash with Ebba O'Rourke, who was an Irish mercenary hired by Arcadine to defend his personal courier. Jace obtained the courier's satchel with the help of his old master, Tatsu Yamashiro, while O'Rourke narrowly escaped capture. While Vol healed from his stab wound, Jace returned to Wayne Enterprises inside the Tri-Corner Yards. He discussed the detail of the courier's package with him. The team discovered that the delivery was transferring six identification cards belonging to persons on government watch lists notably left-wing extremists, who were all seemingly untraceable. Vol informs Jace that he's uncovered something highly encrypted among the source files Jace had previously taken from Lucius to potentially hack into the Arcadine's hard drives. In one of the stored files, the clade of Chiroptera mentioned a third base level in the structure, which Jace pointed out shouldn't even exist. Because the sub-basement was only accessible by a special elevator that had been previously closed and turned off, Jace directed Vol to reroute electricity to the elevator to enable him to examine what was beneath there. The destroyed remnants of the Hibernoculum, a vast subterranean high-tech armament and weapons testing site that housed a sample set of bat armor within one of its poorly functioning vaults, were discovered by Jace. Stricken with disbelief, Jace swiftly recognized that his dilapidated armory belonged to the Batman, not his father. And also, Lucius, Bruce Wayne, and possibly a slew of others were secretly working for the Vigilante. In the I Am Batman comics, which are essentially a continuation of the next Batman Second Son, to avoid arousing unnecessary suspicion, Jace moves out of his family's house, and under the guise of completing a late night duty at Wayne Enterprises, starts up shop inside the Hibernaculum as his new hidden center of operations to continue his search for Tyler Arcadine. Jace comes across his school friend Hadia on his way to the sub-basement level, who was there as a spokesperson for her mother's firm, which was collaborating with Fox Tech to offer broadband connectivity to rural and unserviced regions. Before Hadia's journey back to New York, she and Jace worked out a plan to catch up on old times. Vol returned to the Hibernaculum and informed Jace that he was on the verge of cracking the Bat Armor's trigger codes, and had received a location signal from one of Gotham's fugitive radicals. Following the signal back to the storehouse in Gotham ship, yards, Jason covers the black bagged bodies of all six radicals as well as two hired mercenaries placing explosives inside the warehouse where the radicals remains are being stored. Jace confronts one of the mercs who admits that he and his colleague were unaware of the bodies and were paid to demolish the warehouse tonight in response to a non-violent demonstration in Alleytown. Jace soon deduces that Arcadine was planning a fake flag operation within Gotham by employing skilled hitmen to incite a riot in the disguise of the murdered radicals. Jace decides to return to the high Vernaculum, donning the now operational bat armor in the hopes of averting a bloodbath. On the morning of the demonstration, Arcadine's men opened fire from among the mass of civilian demonstrators on the already furious GCPD. Well, before the GCPD can retaliate against the civilians, Jace arrives in bat armor using smoke grenades to cloud the shooter's view while eliminating Arcadine's men each one by one. Due to the pandemonium of the situation, the GCPD thinks Batman is targeting people and focuses their gunfire on Jace until the magistrate's remotely controlled battle droids arrive to offer assistance. Jace is forced to ditch the severely destroyed bat armor when Vol provides a distraction to allow him to flee with his life. Despite being completely overwhelmed and outmatched, both by the GCPD as well as the magistrate's soldiers, while Jace was successful in stopping a massacre, an extensive campaign of misinformation had already begun on social media to blame Batman for starting the violence. After the disaster, Jace meets Hadia and vents some of his anger without revealing to her the complete truth regarding who he really is. When questioning her for guidance on how to overcome his past and embrace a better future, Hadia says that his true transformation will only begin when he ceases to be a child who committed a mistake and begins to be a man who intends to make an impact. With his own passion reignited, Jace goes to the Hibernaculum. He asks Vol for help in designing something using the subterranean facility's blueprints and technology resources. A new bat suit to wear as an appropriate symbol of revolt against the corrupt organizations that are dragging his city into a nightmarish future. 
As the newest Batman, Jace made a conscious effort to be more recognizable to the citizens of Gotham City. Unlike his predecessor, he arrived at the Hobernoculum after thwarting many crimes, including those committed by the Seer's newfound moral authority force, only for Val to warn him of an individual who had a potential link to Arkadyne. Is Jace Fox going to be the new Batman? John Ridley's I Am Batman comics star Jace Fox, who portrays Prime Earth's newest Batman. This next Batman explores what it really means to serve as the Dark Knight in the series. It is quite evident that Jace Fox is indeed the new Batman, in contradiction to Bruce Wayne, the new Batman regularly emerges from the shadows in order to shine as a ray of hope. Despite making several errors along the road, Jace is committed to making a difference. The inhabitants of New York, on the other hand, are skeptical of a cloaked vigilante in their midst. The older Batman comics have proven to us that without a sidekick, any incarnation of the Cape Crusader in the DC comics would just be incomplete. For decades, Batman's companions, whether they are known by the names of Batgirl or Robin, have added heart and comedy to his storylines. They temper out his harshness and reassure Batman that there will always be hope in Gotham. Our newest Batman, Jace Fox, will have a sidekick, as revealed by a thrilling new cover image for I Am Batman issue 8. Jace is shown strolling beside a little girl dressed in a red and yellow jacket on a more recent version of the artwork for I Am Batman number 8. Created by Olivier Coipel and Alex Sinclair, larger images of Batman with his young sidekick hover over the two in the backdrop. This young female sidekick dresses differently from past Robins or Batgirls, with something like a half mask covering her face and slit eye openings, and her hair wrapped back in a bun. She appears to be between the ages of 10 and 13, comparable to Batman's past crime-fighting allies. The initial pages of the comic don't disclose anything about Batman's new protege's identity or how they'll meet, but they do give readers a glimpse of a Batman battling on his own. So far, I Am Batman is a depressing series, with citizens taking the burden of law onto their very own shoulders as the police force and government lose popular trust. Although New York is still not Gotham, the alleys are beginning to overflow with bat lunacy, the insanity that Batman draws according to Detective Chubb. A little girl with a new perspective of life could be precisely what our new Batman needs. Even more importantly, she could be the New York vigilante who teaches Batman the ropes. While this newcomer is not the same as Robin or Batgirl, Girl, Jace's portrayal of Batman is likewise very different from his predecessor. While it's probable that she'll take on the role of Batgirl, it'd be nice to see a new sort of sidekick develop in the Batman universe. I Am Batman is focused on accepting change, so it'll be interesting to watch how this little girl evolves as she assists Jace Fox's Batman throughout his battle for justice. What makes him a capable superhero? Jace Fox can create, mend, network, hack, edit, manage, and often just grasp how computers function. As it applies to computer systems, this covers both hardware and software. He can also make and use unique gadgets for a variety of purposes. He frequently employs them for both attacking and defending. He is also a competent marksman who's capable of throwing items or weapons such as boomerangs, knives, or shuriken. Bruce Wayne defended Gotham by turning himself into a waking nightmare for villains to dread. While effective, this distanced Bruce from the general public of Gotham, who'd always been frightened of the Cape Crusader. Jace has inverted this dynamic, making it apparent who should and who should not fear him. He is not looking to create a myth, but rather to inspire genuine change by engaging with the folks who need him. This has struck a chord with the Gotham citizens, getting Jace's Batman much wider support than Bruce has ever had, and demonstrating that the newest Cape Crusader is already well on his way to being an even more prominent advocate for the people. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.